Hello again and welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Donna Lamkin Stevens. Here we talk about the people and events that make up the University of Central Arkansas's College of Fine Arts and Communication. And today we're all about Arts Fest, the community celebration of the arts that is preparing for its seventh festival beginning September 27th all over Conway. Our guests today will include Dr. Gail Seymour, Professor of Art and Associate Dean of the College of Fine Arts and Communication, Jim Wilchin, Arts Fest co-chair and vice president for student affairs and dean of students at Hendricks College, and Julie Isom, a local artist and an alumnus of the UCA Department of Art. So don't go away. We have a big show and Spotlight will be right back. The University of Central Arkansas offers programs you can't find anywhere else in the state. Thank you. Like digital filmmaking, an education that's helped me enter film festivals, and intern at a local TV station. UCA has given me school pride I can call my own in a community that feels more like a family. Action. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. I'm back now with Dr. Gail Seymour, Jim Wilchin, and Julie Isom, and welcome guys to Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Gail, I guess you're the authority on the beginnings of Arts Fest. I we, suppose. We go back. So, so tell us, sort of uh, remind the audience of where all this started. It goes back to 2007. That was the year that UCA was celebrating its centennial, mm -hmm. and we had done a community mural down in Simon Park. Um, it also was the time that the Conway Alliance for the Arts was founded, and we thought we needed to do something to kind of launch our group and to dedicate that mural. So did CAFTA precede Arts Fest? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so we decided that we would not only have a dedication, but we would roll a few events into it. And so we turned it into a day-long event, and that, that was the beginning of, of Arts Fest. And as I recall, it was, uh, we got rained out part way through? Not on that first one. Okay, okay. Not on that first one. But we, it was very small in comparison to what, right. to what we're doing now. Yeah, for some reason we decided to just keep adding to it and adding to it, and so that's when our rain issues okay, okay. become more apparent. So what, um, what does CAFTA do besides Arts Fest? Well, CAFTA is a nice way for the community to come together to support the arts all around throughout Conway, and we started last year having an annual award ceremony where we uh, presented awards to outstanding teachers and advocates for the arts. And so that's one thing we're doing, but a lot of it is coordinating support for the arts in the community. And one thing we've recently done is to sponsor and sort of move along a community mural that is down on Chestnut Street mm -hmm. at the corner of Oak and Chestnut. So that's the kind of thing mm -hmm. that CAFTA likes to have its fingers in. Would you say, is it fair to say that Arts Fest though is sort of the feather in CAFTA's cap? Is it the main event of the year? Yes. I think so. We'd love to see it grow up. I mean, what we had hoped that CAFTA became is really a membership where people are driven to it and know that they can look to CAFTA for support of all the arts. And so if we can become almost a united way for the arts for Conway is what mm -hmm. we'd love to be. Mm -hmm. But we're still, it's still a fledgling operation. We're still still growing into some of the things we'd like to be doing. It's, it's hard. You need lots of persons involved and a lot of hours committed. Uh, we've made good progress over the last mm -hmm. seven years, but there's more to be done. Yeah. Okay, so to put on this multi-day arts fest, <laughs> uh, there's a planning committee that is part of CAFTA. Am I right? Or? That's right. Okay, so tell, me, tell us about the committee. Who's on it? Uh, and how long do you? How long have you been meeting for this? Sure. Do you just meet all the time, or what? Seems like it. <laughs> now, now we do. <laughs> we uh, we have two. I have a co-chair. I'm the chair of this year, and Sean Gorgachea which uh, is our other co-chair, and he is uh, really delightful and has a lot of uh, tech background. So he's, oh, he's, our, he's able to do things with the website and do some other things. He's also very uh, active with the locals uh, movement, and so he's, uh, he's been a really great resource. But then we invite specialists like Julie, and we invite other folks to come in that we think can contribute to the ver variety of programs. And but, so it, but at it's the end evolving. of the day, Anybody can be on our planning committee. I mean, oh, okay. a anybody okay. who has a, an eye <laughs> for arts and for the community, they are welcome. Or an to idea for something that Absolutely. should be. Okay. And we have a, a first time the Photography Club of Conway is coming forward to do an exhibit this year, and they have not. They've only been together a short time, and okay. they came to us saying, "Could we do something?" We're like, "Sure." <laughs> and uh, so we we rely on the involvement of groups to also support it. So they they're involved, even though they're not at each weekly meeting they are sponsoring an event that they will take forward and make sure all the things are done for that event. 
we just support them with the concept and, and some of the space arrangements uh, and is where we started. Some of the publicity. And, and publicity. Like mm -hmm. And I think, Gail, what strikes me the most is that uh, in year one, we had a very sort of limited uh, idea of what arts were. Mm -hmm. And now we've really expanded mm -hmm. into all kinds of things. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about some of those here, right. here in just a minute. So Julie, what, I heard you say that your uh, first uh, Arts Fest experience was the first one. Was the first mural. Tell, tell us how you got involved. Well, uh, the first... The, uh, the Aurora Rising. Right. The Aurora mural. Rising, yes. Okay. Well, I was just starting as an art student here at the University of Central Arkansas. And um, the... Um, the person that was doing the mural, Morton, Morton Brown, Morton Brown mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. he was um, my instructor for painting that oh, year. I remember. So mm -hmm. I helped out a little bit, but I really didn't get involved until, really involved in the planning committee until about 2009. Mm -hmm. I volunteered every year. Sure. But, sure. Uh, yeah. And Jim, what about you? You weren't even living here. No, I, I originally. arrived two years into the <laughs> event, and I was actually placed on the CAF by my role at the college. And so, oh, okay. uh, so I was uh, chair of special events, and so all of a sudden I was meeting with CAFTA and then learned about Arts Fest. I I'm proof positive that you don't have to be an artist. <laughs> I was going to ask. To be involved, <laughs> I do not have an artistic background, although um, um, I have an interest in the arts, and okay. I've always had a strong interest in the arts from the standpoint of. Uh, but I have been dabbling in some fun things. He's, <laughs> uh, he's turned into a puppeteer. <laughs> oh, really? I, 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 I created the puppet theater last year. Uh, I created a 14-foot uh, PVC pipe giraffe that we used in the kids' art parade three years ago. And uh, this year we're creating a 12-foot by 12-foot kids' art castle made mm. out of PVC pipe that you'll be able to actually immerse yourself into the event. That is my That is my. That thing. is your medium, so, isn't it? Yeah, so, and last year we <laughs> produced, uh, our theme last year was about uh, light. It is again this year, mm -hmm. actually, but we produced, it was architecture and light, and so what we do, I produced uh, the, a, re a replica of the Willis Tower in Chicago. It was exactly a one to 100 scale model of wow. it made out of PVC pipe that was lit up for the entirety of the evening events. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so it, it's proof that if you get the fever, you can get involved. And it's been really, it's been really fun. And my, my passion has been the kids' day. I, I love being part of the events in the park, and Julie and I are teaming up on that. And so that's, that's something that, for me, is the big deal. I love to see the kids interacting and engaging with all the different exhibits. And it's all about hands-on ex ex exploration, absolutely. And that, that's the part that keeps me coming back, even the tired long hours, long meetings yeah. and such. So. Um, we're going to get into specifics in a minute, but just how does the overall lineup this year compare to previous ones? Uh, I think I think it's right in line, or maybe a little busier than in mm -hmm. past years. Mm -hmm. uh, Seems every like year, it's grown every year. Every year there's an addition or, or a complication. And this year we we uh, one of the things we've changed. We have an event here at UCA at Reynolds on uh, our Saturday of Arts Fest, mm -hmm. which pushed back our traditional start time for Arts in the Park. Well, we thought it was such a good event for families to come to. They come here, have that event, and then move over to mm -hmm. the park for the rest of the afternoon. And then we're adding actually uh, night events on Saturday. We're doing uh, focus on jazz music. And so people can right. come down and be involved. Hey, jazz musicians out there, you want to be involved, right. we, we, have your, we have your place to be involved. So. Well, it seems like we've got music, art, theater, dance, let's see, creative writing and film. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Photography? Mm -hmm. Still photography? Anything I'm... I think you've got all the main, you've categories. the main ones. Okay. And, and what does it mean, I mean, how important is it to, keep, to continually expand our, our definition of art? I'm not sure. I, I just wanted to say something about the traditions. I mean, yeah, every year we have um, educators that come and the students' mm -hmm. art in um, right. American Management American Management Corporation has the students' art, so we are involved with the schools, and that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, I just wanted to say that. I, I, could you repeat? I don't know what the question was again. <laughs> well, it's about. I think. Well, the PVC pipe is a clear example <laughs> of our uh, acceptance of all kind of form of art. I think. I think it's hard because you hear art, and you might think of visual art. You might be impacted right. by that, but really, the arts. We're arts fest, not art fest, and so mm -hmm. the idea is to involve people. And so on Saturday, I think it's best to describe about what's happening on Saturday because you'll have vendors in a vendor area selling art and showing their product. You'll have people having different activities in the um, in the kid zone, and then we'll also have um, um, performances. On we'll stage. have those on stage and on the puppet theater. So at once you're immersed inside of this whole thing, and then there's exhibits 
all around you. What it's makes public. it what makes it challenging is that you know some other festivals are one day festivals. We're a week and we're multi venue, mostly yeah. multi venue yeah. inside outside. You yeah. know, it's it's everywhere. And so from the standpoint, it is it is great because it immerses the entire city and in our opens program. it up for everyone. Well, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to take art out of the mansions and museums, right, right, and um, to put it within reach of of everyone Absolutely. in our city and. You know, we're so lucky in Conway that, that we've got these three colleges and mm -hmm. these schools that all have these resources and that really come together for this one week to, to really have this gift to the city as, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. And uh, I think that that really is all about quality of life. Well, and it's, it's so big. Sure. If you hear our mayor talk about it, he talks about how in selling HP and coming to Conway and talking with Southwestern Energy, talking about the quality of life Arts mm -hmm. was the indicator that drew them here. That's and how you get an A. It. That's how you get the A. You right, get the right, A by having right. and, and so I think we need people to continue to be involved. And I think it's hard because there's a lot of planning that goes into it, but it's also easy on some levels because if you have an idea, we're small enough community, you mm -hmm. come forward with the idea, and we can help you embrace it, and we can add you into the list and to promote it. And so that lends itself to being uh, very egalitarian. Mm -hmm. so. Now, we're going to talk about specifics, okay. and there's no way, <laughs> there's so much going That's on, right. there's no way our viewers can keep up with all this. So we want to drive them to a website That's right. for, for, for specific details. So where should everyone go? And then we're going to give them a snippet of what to expect. That's but right. where should everyone go? They should go to artsinconway.org. Okay. And that will get them to the complete schedule. And um, there's also Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yes, all of those things. And um, hopefully they'll they'll join us for whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. seems but, to be interesting. But that's to the them. good starting point. Yes. yes. Okay. And Facebook. And, and I'm nice. sure yes. that the log cabin and other papers will have some sort of a schedule. We've been working with the Arkansas Times. They're planning to print the full schedule. Oh, good. Excited well. about good. that too. Good. So, and that's coming out in their September issue, which is yeah. their arts issue. Okay. So. So that's another okay. place. Okay, so we start off on Friday, S September 27th, with a yarn bombing. So, Julie, <laughs> that is your baby, right? So you talk first and tell <laughs> us about it, and then I understand that you don't brag enough on yourself, so we're going to have somebody <laughs> to brag on you. Well, I mean. <laughs> so okay. what is yarn bombing? Well, it, the best way to explain it is um, if you know what graffiti art is, I think a lot of people know what graffiti art or spray paint mm -hmm. art where you, but this is with um, soft pieces of knitted yarn or crocheted yarn. Um, it's a, it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. You put it on some hard surfaces or some surfaces that you're, like we're gonna put it on the caboose. You normally see this caboose there and it's a beautiful caboose, but now it's gonna be soft and- <laughs> you, Completely I, covered. Completely covered. It will be transformed with wow. patterns, colors, textures. Okay. Yes, exactly. And then people will be able to come in on the 27th. We'll have some um, yarn pieces available. So, and I'll have materials for them to use mm -hmm. to help with the yarn bombing. And we're going to do uh, lamp posts, and trees. All downtown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In, Simon in, Park. Simon Park. in Simon Park. It's just okay. in Simon Park, yes. And what I want to say about Julie is that Julie did a BFA here at UCA and her internship was with the world's most famous yarn bomber, uh, Magda Sayeg, who is in Austin, Austin Texas, Texas, right Texas right now. Mm -hmm. who famously yarn bombed a bus in Brazil, I think it was. It was in New Mex it was in Mexico, <laughs> a bus. In Mexico. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she's been all over the yeah, world. Yeah, she, she's really the, the it person. So, so we have in our own community, we, we have someone who really has the expertise to pull off a project like this. I, you know, it's one thing to say we're going to cover the caboose with yarn, but it's another thing to actually do it mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. think about the logistics involved mm -hmm. in that. I mean, it, it's really about community, that the, mm -hmm. really the essence of what a community is coming together really working through an idea. And yes, because I'm not doing it alone. Right. For mm -hmm. sure. Is this your largest project though? With with this with, yarn, yes. Yeah. Okay. She, yes. She's already bombed a motorcycle. We did the motorcycle one year, <laughs> yeah. 2010. Yeah, she bombed a motorcycle. Okay. And that was a workout, so. Uh. <laughs> yes, and I had a lot of help with it too, I mean, yeah. so. Okay, and also on Friday, September 27th, we have the Conway Symphony Orchestra, right. uh, their sort of kickoff concert right. outdoors mm -hmm. in Simon Park. That's right. And the Lantern Theater production of Amateurs. That's right. So all this is going on 
downtown simultaneously. Downtown simultaneously. So, you know, people need to just decide what it is they want to see. <laughs> It's going to be difficult to, to decide. That's right. Now, on Tuesday, October 1st, we have the Arkansas Saxophone Quartet with a multimedia concert. What's, what's that? Well, they're going to play saxophones, but they're also going to play pieces of music that were inspired by art. So in addition to the music, you will see projected images of paintings and whatnot. Uh, one of the pieces is specifically inspired by um, a 20th century artist named Mark Toby. Um, so that should be a really interesting concert. So did Jackie Lamar and her group sort of, I mean, they've created this, they found the artworks that they That's were right. inspired by? That's right. So where is this going to be? This will be at the Lantern Theater. Okay. And so again, we're so excited. This is the first year we've really worked with the Lantern. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just a fabulous venue for so many things that, that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so that will be where um, this concert will take place. And that's on Van Ronkel. That's Street. correct. Okay. And it's a free concert, no okay. tickets, just show up and okay. um, enjoy it's it. It's free. <laughs> so much of what we do is free, and I think that's a point that has to be made because um, we do have some events that we have to charge for sure. that's too costly, but for, by and large, almost all events are free, and people are welcome to come, and they actually don't require reservations, uh, so you can come on the spot if you mm -hmm. have the time. So we'd love for you to come early and make sure we're filled <laughs> up. So. Yeah. Now, and I understand that Central Baptist College for the first time yeah. is involved. Tell us about what, what they're going to do. That's really exciting. We're, we're just absolutely thrilled. And um, so they're going to be hosting an author on Tuesday night, Lee mm -hmm. McElroy. October 1st. That's right. So there will be a, 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 an author reading and a book signing. So At CBC. At CBC. Okay. So that, that, that's a really big that's deal great. for us, and we're really thrilled about it. That, that's, so we have 100% we have particip right. participation now. That's, that, right. that's wonderful. Okay, on Wednesday, October 2nd, we have an evening of literature and music downtown, which is going to be quite an evening on the rooftop of the former Michelangelo's. That's right. Okay, that's right. tell us about that. Well, if I know enough, here's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> um, this is going to be the Oxford American, the Toadsuck Review, and what is the Hendrix? The Onion. Yeah, um, all of those. Uh, literary magazines are going to come together, and so it will be a kind of combination of words and music. There's also going to so be so there will be readings from readings, the staff. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, and then there will be uh, a pop rock punk band, Frass, um, the Frass that okay. will also be playing that evening. And so it should be really fun. So I'm sure hopeful that the weather is going to be splendid and the rooftop of Michelangelo's Beautiful will be an place. exciting place to be. It's really fun. It, it's going to be a fun event. People should really plan to come. And that's in the evening of October the 2nd. Yep. Right. And then we really move into the the uh, meat of the week, I guess, on Thursday, Friday, right. Saturday. Right. So Thursday, October 3rd, we start with the Cassatt, Cassatt String Quartet. Right. Tell that, us about that that's whole one event. Of, that's one of my projects that I've been working on for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. Um, the Cassatt String Quartet is a world-class string quartet based in New York City. Um, they're going to be coming and performing a fantastic concert in Reynolds Performance Hall. I mean, this is the kind of music that we don't get to hear all the time. You know, this is the real thing. But what's going to make this concert even more special is that they're going to be premiering, it'll be the world premiere of a piece of music that UCA has commissioned, the College of Fine Arts and Communication. Um, the, the piece of music is called Mary Cassatt, Scenes from Her Life. And um, it's composed by Bruce Adolph, who is also known on NPR as the Piano mm -hmm. Puzzler. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is really. A, a and he will be here in the spring. He, well, and he's also going to be present for the concert. Oh, great! Yeah, great. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, the, 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 the composer hates to miss the, the premiere. You know, it only happens once. <laughs> That's exciting. And uh, so he'll be here as well. In fact, I think he's going to introduce the music from the stage. Tremendous. And um, so, so I just hope, I just hope people out there will will really come and and really appreciate that. These kinds of moments where original music is created mm -hmm. and where a world-class ensemble is playing it doesn't happen very often. No, and no. it only it t tends to happen in places like New York or, or London, um, but mm -hmm. it's happening right here in Conway, Arkansas. That's what's so exciting about. What's what's the background on the, on the name of the quartet? I mean, are they based on? No, well, that's an that's interesting question. They um, they're four women. And Mary Cassatt, of course, was a famous American mm -hmm. 19th century woman artist. And they chose the name Cassatt because they admired the way that the artist lived an independent life, a creative life. And so she, in a way, is sort of their muse. Inspiration, yeah, okay. sort of their muse. Okay. That's great, that's great. And then also on Thursday, we have Jen Lewin. That's right. Okay, so these are a couple of big, big events that really need some explanation, I think, because you can see the, the photographs, but you're mm -hmm. not really sure 
what what they are. So well, let me handle this one, and then I'll let them speak okay. about the other ones in just a minute, because this is another one of, of my projects. Mm -hmm. um, Jen Lewin is actually here through the Bomb Gallery at mm -hmm. UCA. Artist in residence. That's right. She's an artist in residence. She is a light and sound sculptor from Colorado. Um, she is going to be bringing two pieces to Conway. One is called The Pool, the other one is called Chandelier Harps. Um, the Pool, if you can imagine, Alumni Circle is going to have about 120, At UCA. Yeah, okay. about 120 discs, about the size of this table, about three feet in diameter. Um, they're going to be all connected electronically somehow so that when you touch them, they're going to make different kinds of colors. Okay. And depending on how you touch them, how many people touch them simultaneously, it, it creates different kinds of patterns. This is the epitome of interactive art. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it's only art when people interact <coughs> right, with it. Right, right. And technology. And, and, and technology. technology. <coughs> That's right. Excuse yes. me. The other piece, the chandelier harps, is going to be a series of lasers, vertical lasers, in a sort of circle. Um, so that when you run your hand and break the beam, it will make a sound. Oh. And depending on the height of your hand and how quickly you do this and how many and people how many are people. doing it simultaneously. And so we can have, we want crowds. We expect to in. have crowds. Okay. And I think one of the things that's fascinating about Lewin's pieces is that she finds that people who don't know each other, who come together mm -hmm. at this moment, kind of create games that everyone cooperates with and um, so it's it's going to be really exciting to see how how art. people are going to experience these pieces and so these two pieces will be up thursday three nights, three nights. right okay thursday friday and saturday okay great and then we also are going to have a dance element on the thursday night right we're working on that okay we hope to have the core performance company with guests uh, perform interact with these sculptures so it, it should oh, be great. a really fantastic great. moment Okay, and then on Friday, October 4th, we move to the light up the night downtown uh, mm -hmm. for the college crowd. Absolutely. Tell me about that. We have several bands performing, and uh, I'll tease the audience by saying go to artsandconway.org <laughs> to see the names of the bands. There's really too but much to keep up with. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a taste for all. Even and for, it's for you, yeah. It starts at 6 o'clock in, in the park, and there'll be four different bands playing, you know, half hour to 40 minute sets but it's free of charge, come on down. There'll be other exhibits. We'll have a photo booth there that'll be doing a, a giveaway photos. Plus we'll have a, a light bomber, which we're using LED uh, technology that you'll go into a dark space and you'll actually create your own art. It's an immersive, again. And then we're bringing back our graffiti art, our graphite artists, which uh, we do poses with the model and give just regular folks a chance to try to draw uh, their best as best they can <laughs> capture the image in drawing without much training or any training right. they, but but the fun is it's a communal thing mm -hmm. so we'll do a three minute sitting we'll have 12 people sitting around with pads they'll sit around and they'll go say all right go and try to <laughs> capture as best they can <laughs> and it is uh, tremendous because what emerges from it is just this collective view of what's happening from an individual perspective, mm -hmm. from 12 ind individual perspectives about the same thing. And that's about our community. I think anytime mm -hmm. you can bring a community and immerse them in the art, that, that is successful. And then we have the Conway Film Festival, which will go Friday and Saturday, that's October right. 4th and 5th. They'll Tell be us at where the that Lantern at as the well. Lantern. Okay. And that's sponsored by the UCA Film Club? That's right. I think this is the fifth year they've done that. And uh, so there's be all kinds of films Short that will, films. Have, will have been juried mm -hmm. uh, by mm -hmm. committee. And so I, I still don't know what's going to make the cut, but I'm anxious to see what the lineup is. And all will be. this is free. That's right. Film festival's free, just show up. And then on Saturday, October 5th, the event that you were talking about, Jim, is the Lightwire Theater's performance of The Ugly mm -hmm. Duckling and The Tortoise and the Hare at Reynolds Performance Hall, a children's show, mm -hmm. which is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen around here. This is the organization that's seen on America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is going to be sponsored by Reynolds Performance Hall. And this, this is one of the few events where there is a charge. There's a $5 charge mm -hmm. for children. And I think it's $10 mm -hmm. for adults. Mm -hmm. But it should be fantastic. And I hope everybody will come out and see it before they come to the park. That's absolutely. And they can come right from there, right down to the park. And, and then tell us what's going on at the park. Everything. Uh, performances <laughs> but not on until, stage. Not until this is over with. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to start until 11. We'll 11. We'll 11 start at 11. And we have the ability to push back a little bit if we have a longer performance. But we will make, uh, it'll be, a, the, the stage will be teaming with different kinds of performances. We have Blackbird Academy, mm -hmm. uh, which will be performing a lot of different disciplines of dance and music uh, and even some spoken word I believe and then follow it with some from Preston Palmer and some students from there 
Uh, we have a, a drummer from Zimbabwe mm -hmm. who's going to be doing a performance with a, a, a duet. It's going to be fun. It's a drum that you don't see around Conway, <laughs> another exposure. We also have uh, the Cloggers who are going to be here okay, and they'll be good. doing a performance. And they're really fun. Uh, they are such, such energy comes from that stage. Uh, the Hendrix Dance Ensemble will be doing a performance. So that'll all be going on in like half an hour increments. And in between there, we'll be have the debut of our uh, puppet theater uh, <laughs> performance, which Faulkner County Library uh, has teamed up with us to do the week before Arts Fest. There'll be workshops for kids who are, I think it's eight to 13 is the age group that's invited. They sign up, they come in, they help create the show, and then they will perform it at Arts Fest. And so uh, all free, they need to see the Faulkner County Library to be involved, but that will be performing. And then at the same time, <laughs> Julie will have, uh, <laughs> Julie is doing great work coordinating all the different art immersion experiences. Why don't you yes, talk about those? Yes, we'll have every year, every year so far we've had clay, uh, a clay booth where the children can just walk in and there'll be six or seven or eight areas um, that the children will be able to choose from and explore different, one, one theme is uh, paper books, another one is watercolors, and then uh, Robbie Burton, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many years he's been coming, mm -hmm. but they love getting their characters drawn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. drawn, and what else? Several other, uh, there's about eight or nine booths and open for and the children. And all day, at the same um, time, mm -hmm. we've got this uh, Arts Fest Marketplace. Right. Which is, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the marketplace, <laughs> no, 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 it in. just goes on. Yeah, well, yeah, and, yeah. And so the, what we started last year is we, we reached out to some vendors to talk to them about coming in and being able to do a juried show mm -hmm. and also be able to sell some of the things they're creating. And it was a big success last year. In fact, um, we, they were very interested in immediately saying, are you doing this again next year? So we will be bigger this year with more vendors. There's an opportunity to sign up for that. You go to the artsinconway.org if you have an interest in being a vendor and sign up for a booth. There's a cost for that, but again, everyone that enters can enter a piece that can also pay off enterprise money. So it's, a, it's actually a great thing. And we're also having, we're working still on the details of a chili cook-off between oh, okay. local organizations. Helps raise funds for us, sure, sure. Uh, but it, it's, uh, you buy a bowl and you're able to walk around and sample different kinds of chili. And then we're also going to have some other vendor uh, carts there that will be there for if people want to buy their own, their own uh, foods there. But make it really a, a festival in that you can kind of just wander around and have um, a lot of different experience in a very short period of time and so yes it's like a it's a festival mm -hmm. we're gonna have uh, and patty cakes is coming and mm -hmm. she's gonna bring her cupcakes oh good so <laughs> there'll be food I mean and, and then we'll close out with the jazz fest yes. in Simon Park yep. so and then that will be the mm -hmm. okay so it will be worn out um, <laughs> wow I'm worn out just listening to it so so uh, okay so one more time we we could use volunteers still that's yeah, absolutely. right and they Please should go, go to, the to website, the website. And, and don't feel like you need to have any expertise sometimes we need to help just guiding people to places sometimes or even with set up yeah. and tear down okay. uh, and be a part of the arts you know too many people stand around and say you know I really like that but you know what uh, what can I contribute well you contribute by coming down and helping us uh, put it together <laughs> it's a huge part that you realize that a small group of, of uh, committee members can't always fulfill without the help okay. of volunteers. All right, well, it should be great fun. So uh, we encourage everybody to come out and thank you so much for coming on Spotlight. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll be back in a minute. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics, helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. I was able to graduate early with a business degree and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. For more information about the programs and people featured on the show, call the UCA College of Fine Arts and Communication at 501-450-3293 or check out our website www.uca.edu slash CFAC and be sure to like us on Facebook. Join us again next time when we'll be talking to Joe Dull, Associate Professor of Digital Filmmaking, about our second feature-length narrative, narrative film, Sympathy Pains. So be sure to join us then.